Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. And the reason that is needed is because there are so many brands of Christianity, and they all say they come from the Bible. So we need to ask the question, how can they all come from the Bible when they're all so different? Is the Bible really true? Is the Bible credible? Now, we have a booklet by that title, How Credible is the Bible? And we have the CD to go with it. So we're right up to date with modern reading books. You get your headphones and you can listen to it. People say of the Bible, well, it was written by men. That's true. What books have you read? Were they not written by men? Yes, indeed. So how credible is the Bible, and how can we prove it? Because we're told in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Now, the best way to begin to prove the credibility of the Bible is by studying Old Testament prophecies first and then New Testament prophecies. Now, very few people realize, in spite of the opinions of how many people, that every single prophecy that has been fulfilled was fulfilled exactly as the prophets gave it. Now, why? Today, you look at the weatherman, it's hard for him to even go 24 hours ahead of time and get it right. How about prophecies that were 50 years in advance, 100 years in advance, 150? 200 years in advance, 300 years in advance, and they're all fulfilled to the letter. Maybe you never heard that. Maybe you never understood that. Now then, in this booklet by Duncan McLeod, he goes through and he shows how the prophecies concerning Egypt and every one of them have been fulfilled. There's one prophecy where God said he would dry up the Nile. And that was fulfilled. Now, a little sidebar on that. You have a lot of archaeologists and Egyptologists that go to Egypt to try and find out how old this and that and the other thing is. So alongside the Nile River, there was this large lake. And when the Nile dried up, that lake dried up, and the desert winds blew away all the sediment that was there in the lake. Later, it filled back up when the Nile ran again. So scientists were sending down their core drills to try and find the original sediment. But do you know what their conclusion was? When the Nile River dried up and the lake dried up, the winds blew away all the sediment, and therefore they couldn't tell that the lake had been there except that it filled up again. And how about all the destruction that is given in the book of Exodus? Did you know that there are historical records recording every single one of the plagues that occurred 
in Egypt when Moses was sent to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Then there are prophecies against the Phoenicians, prophecies against Assyria and Nineveh, and prophecies against Babylon. Now that becomes very, very interesting. Now, when you go back and read the prophecies, you will see that it says, and the word of the Lord came to Isaiah or Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or the, or the, the 12 minor prophets. One of the major prophecies fulfilled was contained in the book of Jeremiah. He had a 40-year ministry to the Jews in Judea that if they didn't repent of their sins, God was going to send them into captivity, and God was going to destroy the city and the temple. And he did. Another sidebar fact, every single archaeological excavation proves the Bible prophecies true. In every instance, there has been never one where it did not substantiate a Bible prophecy. One major one was people didn't even believe that there was a city of Jericho. But guess what happened? They found the ancient city of Jericho. And guess what they found with the walls? They all collapsed outward. The Bible says that Jericho is the city whose walls came tumbling down. Archaeologist Dr. Bryant Wood has spent over 20 years studying the material excavated from Jericho. This is where the mud brick wall was located, right here on top of this stone retaining wall. This is the stone retaining wall which held in place the earthen embankment that surrounded the city. And on top of the stone retaining wall was the mud brick wall. And on the seventh trip around, we're told in the Bible, the mud brick wall collapsed and it fell outward and down to the base of the stone retaining wall. And when the archaeologists dug in this area, they found this pile of mud bricks all the way along the retaining wall. One of the archaeologists that found these collapsed bricks is Peter Parr who excavated Jericho in the 1950s. Yes, there were remains of the mud brick that had fallen down. I mean, that wall came tumbling down. This find of a collapsed city wall found here at Jericho is unique in archaeology. At no other site have we found evidence for a city wall that has fallen down. Since the details in the text match so well with the archaeological evidence found here, then the best conclusion that we can draw is that at the time of Joshua's conquest, the walls of Jericho really did come tumbling down. When you have a God who is a God of truth, it's impossible to lie, and he sends a prophet with his word, it's going to happen. Now we find this statement by the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter, the first chapter, where he writes and he says, knowing this first, here's the first thing to understand, no prophecy of Scripture originated as anyone's own private opinion, because prophecy was not brought at any time by human will, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now let's see a major prophecy that began in the 560s BC and is still being fulfilled today. Here is a prophecy, a major, major prophecy, which then is the framework for all the other prophecies from that time forward. 
and also the framework on which prophecies in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, and the minor prophets would be fulfilled in time coming down past the date of their giving and past the date of Daniel's vision that was given to him. Now, this is very important because this prophecy was given in a dream to King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. He is the one who took the Jews into captivity from Jerusalem and Judea. And among those were Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were dedicated to God. And as a matter of fact, they were in the college after being educated in the language of the Babylonians, they were in the college of wise men, the counselors to the king. So the king had a dream. He was astonished by it. So he came to all the astrologers and the sorcerers and the wise men and said, I've ha I had a dream. And they said, what was it, king? He said, I'm not going to tell you. I want you to tell me what the dream was and its interpretation. Well, to make a long story short, Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego prayed to God, and he revealed the dream and its meaning. And this becomes the backbone prophecy from the 560s BC, clear to the setting up of the kingdom of God on earth at the return of Jesus Christ. So because the wise men weren't able to answer, Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill him. But after God revealed to Daniel at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego the dream, then Daniel was taken to the king. Now let's pick it up here in Daniel 2 and verse 19. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now notice these next couple of verses here, because this gives us an overall outline of all prophecy and all history. See, because there is a God in heaven, who is in charge of this earth, and we will see what Daniel says. Verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes times and seasons. God is in control of everything. He removes kings and sets up kings. Now keep that in mind. That's what we find down through the history of Israel, the history of Judah, the history of the Gentile kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. That's how you're going to understand the credibility of the Bible because of fulfilled prophecy. And end time prophecies we'll see a little later that are being fulfilled to this day. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and the light dwells with him. So he said, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me this wisdom and might and has now made known to me what we desired of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went to Arioch, that was the one in charge of the guards, and he took him to the king with a message, Don't destroy the wise men. So he brought Daniel. And the king answered and said to Daniel, I found a man of the captives of Judah 
who has made the interpretation known to the king. And a king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, that was his Babylonian name, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Now notice the answer. This become very, very important because the one who's in charge of giving prophecy and fulfilling prophecy is God. And he delegated that to Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus Christ when he came, he said, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but I came to fulfill and that is to complete them. So Jesus is the one who fulfills. And Jesus was the Lord God of the Old Testament who revealed this to Daniel. So note at verse 27, Daniel's answer. The secret which the king has demanded cannot be shown to the king by the wise men, the enchanters, the astrologers, or the magicians. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and makes known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. From that time to the latter days, from that time to the return of Jesus Christ. And many of these prophecies are also locked into the prophecies of Revelation. And it's interesting that this prophecy was given in Babylon to the king of Babylon, the very first one who we'll see was the head of gold, and carries forward to the return of Jesus Christ. So this is one of the most important prophecies in the Bible, and many other things come from this. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed are these. As for you, O king, while upon your bed your thoughts came to you of what should come to pass hereafter. And he who reveals secrets makes known to you what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living man, so that the interpretation may be known to the king and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. Now stop and think about this for just a minute. The thoughts of your heart. Did you know that God is so almighty and so powerful that no thought can be withheld from him? Now think on that. Think on that in your private life. Think on that concerning the prophecies that are in the rest of the Bible, and there are many, many, many of them. So Daniel said, verse 31, And you, O king, looked, and behold, a great image, that great image whose brightness was surpassing, stood before you, and its form was awesome. Then he described it step by step by step. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms were of silver, his belly and thighs were of bronze, his legs were of iron, his feet were of part iron and part clay. And you watched until a stone, just out of thin air, in the dream, was cut without hands that struck the image upon its feet, which were of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Then... The iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were broken into pieces, and they became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor, blown away by the wind, so that not a trace of them was found. Now think about that. That is a complete description of the coming of the kingdom of God by Jesus Christ and the setting up of the kingdom of God, which will be based on everything that God has planned and what he wants done, and it will be ruled over 
and run by those who have been converted, who have God's Spirit, who will be resurrected at the return of Jesus Christ. Now, I've got a little ahead of myself, but you need to understand this. Another very important thing. So you can make this the connection with the book of Revelation. Where was this dream given? Babylon. To whom was it given? To the king. Who gave the interpretation? Daniel, one of the most righteous men of the Bible. Think on this at the end time. The book of Revelation calls the whole world system at the end Babylon the Great. Now, the reason I'm going through this is because you can prove there was Judea taken into captivity, just as God said by the mouth of Jeremiah. There was a King Nebuchadnezzar, and that can be proved in history. And the Babylonian Empire was one of the greatest ones in the world. And it did fall, exactly as the prophecies of Jeremiah said, and the prophecies of Isaiah said, and Ezekiel. A little sidebar on how to understand the Bible. A little here, a little there, line upon line, precept upon preceptor, and you put it all together. So Daniel is doing this exact thing right here to set the pattern for us on how to know the Bible is credible and it is true and everything in it is going to, in prophecy, is going to be carried out exactly as God has said. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. New heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, all right there. So here this prophecy is from the time of King Nebuchadnezzar to the end of the book of Revelation in the New Testament. Amazing. Now let's go on. This is the dream. We will tell you the interpretation before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Notice who sets up kings and takes them down. God does. And wherever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the birds of heaven, he is given into your hand. That's a prophecy going clear down to Babylon the Great in Revelation. And has made you ruler over them. You are this head of gold. Now we find a very important thing in prophecy right here to understand the credibility of the Bible. When it talks about a king, it can also be synonymous with his kingdom. We'll see that right here. You, king, are the head of gold, and after you shall arise another kingdom. What do we find in history that came after Babylon here? The Persian Empire led by Cyrus, who was prophesied 150 years before he came to release the Jews in Babylon and by Darius, the king of Media. After you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you, and another third kingdom of bronze, and that is Alexander the Great and the great Grecian Empire that he raised up. And a fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. For as much as iron breaks in pieces and beats all things down, as the iron that crushes all things shall it break in pieces and crush. Not talking about the all-powerful return of Christ. And whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of iron, because it, you saw the iron mixed with the miry clay. And if the toes of the feet were part iron, part clay, these are the ten kings of Revelation 17. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas you saw the iron mixed with the miry clay, 
They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cling to one another, even as iron does not combine with clay. And in the days of these kings, the ten toes are identified as ten kings. That agrees with Revelation 17. In the days of these kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now notice verse 45, because this becomes important and we can apply it to every single prophecy of the Bible. So when you look at prophecy fulfilled, that tells you that every word of God is true and everything God has said will take place. Notice what he says here, verse 45. Because you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. And it's written down so that we can go back and read in history. Now, in this booklet, Duncan MacLeod covers every bit of that for Babylon, for Nineveh, for Assyria, for Persia, for Greece, for Rome. And then he looks at the things concerning the New Testament. So what we have just covered here is this is the framework, part of the framework of understanding Scripture. This is like the backbone of a skeleton. Everything clings to the spine or the backbone. All the other prophecies of the Bible relating to this all come together and reach back to the beginning and clear to the ending. And this is why Jesus said, that he was the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, and that he is going to fulfill these prophecies. So today, we are looking at things that are quite amazing because we are living in the end time Babylon the Great. Now, this, Daniel 2, is the major backbone prophecy for understanding many of the prophecies in the Old Testament. The book of Revelation and the prophecies of Christ, as we will see, form another part of the skeleton on which they are fulfilled in the end times. Because remember, Daniel 2 goes from the time of Nebuchadnezzar to the time of the establishing of the kingdom of God. Now then, what does this mean to you? This means you need to study your Bible. This means you need to get in there and understand the prophecies. You go to truthofgod.org. We have many on prophecies. Another prophecy you need to understand, to understand today, who America and Britain are in prophecy and where are they today? How did they become such great and powerful nations? So... Once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. Till next time, this is Fred Coulter saying so long, everyone.